um, coming to you this morning doing the Bible study for uh, Road to Glory Ministries. And um, my mom is traveling, so I'm filling in for her again this morning. And uh, we're, we're still dealing with strongholds. And, and um, I'm kind of doing these sidebar uh, things, not out of her book, but it's still, it, it's still things that will help you to overcome the, these uh, strongholds that you have in your life. And so Saturday, I got to do the devotional at the barrel race at Athens, and um, I, maybe you tuned in and saw that, or maybe you've gone on the Road to Glory page and you watched that. But I, I really feel led to c kind of do a little more in-depth continuation of that, because if we are ever going to really overcome these strongholds that exist in our life, then you know we're, we are going to have to see Jesus as being um, the powerful savior that he is. And so um, I'm, I'm gonna kind of touch back to start with on some of the things that I covered in that devotional. And I'm gonna start off this, this morning and I'm gonna read to you from Revelations um, in, chapter in chapter 19, verse 11. And this is, um, this is a, a, a picture of the resurrected Jesus. And it says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. And like I said in my devotional, see, we know that he's talking about Jesus in this passage right here because if you read the first part of John, then it says that the word, uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so, and, and also uh, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so that's how we know that this establishes that who this part is talking about right here is in fact Jesus. Uh, verse 14 says, The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads on the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so that's, that is the Jesus that I want you to. To, to get an image of is the resurrected Jesus. Yes, Jesus went to the cross. He died for our sins. He was buried in a tomb and he rose again. And all of that is absolutely uh, an amazing. It is absolutely amazing. But he is not still hanging on that cross, nor is he buried in that tomb. If you remember when Martha went to find Jesus at the tomb, the angel was waiting for her there and he told her, he's not here, he, has, he is risen. And so he, he, he has been uh, raised from the dead, and it says in the Bible that the same power that rose Christ from the dead lives in us. So now we have access to that same power that rose Jesus from the dead. So when he left here, he didn't leave us standing here empty-handed. He left us with, a great, with an access to a great and wonderful power that he possessed. And when we accept him as our savior and he comes to live in us, then now that is what we are partakers in. We are partakers in that resurrection of Jesus Christ that, that raised him from the dead, that seated him in heaven with his father. And so that authority was, is now given to us. And so, um, you know, it, it says also that in Jesus is saying, in my name, you will cast out demons, you will speak in other tongues, you will lay hands on the sick and be healed. And, and, he, and he said that those are things that we would do. And so it, it begs the question, why are we not really seeing those things done? Um, you know, and, and so really the stronghold that I'm going to be speaking to the, uh, and about this morning is that religious stronghold because because that Jesus bumped up against that all throughout his ministry that was that was one thing that 
I mean, ultimately, it is what sent him to the cross. But he bumped up against that religious spirit his entire ministry because they just could not see him and accept him for who and what he was. And, you know, we still, in this day and age, we still, my goodness, we bump up against that. We, I mean, I, I, I see it so often on Facebook that, you know, we want to sit and judge and jury and condemn people of their sins and pass sentence on them and say, you're going to hell because you're this or you're going to hell because you're that. And, you know, that, that, that's not our place. It's not our place to decide who's going to heaven and who's not. That's, that's up to God and He is the judge and He will judge every person um, and, and it's not up to us. And, you know, I know people say, well, the Bible says, well, the Bible says this is wrong. Well, the Bible says that is wrong. Um, and, and yes, it does. It establishes what is sin and what isn't. But I, I'm just going to tell you, if, that, if you feel that that's your axe to grind or that's your soapbox to stand on, then jump up on that sucker. But you better be prepared to call it all out. And don't just don't just sit there and pick and choose which ones you're going to talk about, and and then not say anything to about about the others. No, if you're going if that's the soapbox you want to stand on, then um, stand on it. Stand on that soapbox and call out that sin. But you better be prepared to call it all out. And so. Um, the, the passage of scripture that I was using in my devotional was from Math, was from is from Mark, and um, it was it's it's when Jesus dealt with the demon possessed man. And so, starting out in chapter five, verse one, it says they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. When Jesus asked him, What is your name? The man says, My name is Legion. He replied, For we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. Okay, get this. Jesus went to... He, he left um, Capernaum. That's where he had been. He had been over in Capernaum. And that's where he had done his ministry, and that's where uh, basically his people were, the Jews, um, you know, his people. That, that was the area that he'd been in. This region that he went to was uh, a Gentile region. And so, but here comes this man, and he, he already establishes. He knows who Jesus is better than some of the religious people that he left over in Capernaum. Because they're all going, I don't know who, they're all over there in Capernaum. I don't know who he thinks he is. And here comes this man saying, g giving Jesus the, the recognition of who he was. I mean, he, he, he refers to him as Jesus, son of the most high. So, and, and he was demon possessed. And so, you know, the, the demons, they knew who Jesus was. But here's the religious people over here that Jesus was sent to. And they don't even, they're going, I don't know who he thinks he is. Hmm. So, so, uh, the, the demons, see, they've established a stronghold in this man and, and in this area. And so what they're asking Jesus is, don't, don't make us leave this area because we, we've, you know, we've set up camp here and we kind of like it here and we really want to stay here. So don't send us out of this area. And so, he, so uh, it says in verse 11, a large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep banks into the lake and were drowned. 
Okay, so here's the thing. The, when Jesus asked this man to identify himself, the demons identified themselves as legions. Legions were a group of foot soldiers, about 6,000 strong. So, so these are um, maybe what you would call like, like kind of lesser demons, but they're, they're, they're still pretty strong. And, and the fact that this man was, um, that they identified themselves as legion lets us know that it was more than one. Okay, so, but so, so he, the people in this region had tried to restrain this man. They had tried to tie him up. They had tried to bind him, uh, and he kept he kept breaking loose of these of their bond of their chains. And his this demon was just he was strong. He was I mean he was he was running loose, and so you know. Um, I've been listening to Pastor Stephen Furtick, and, and he's been doing a sermon series that he's entitled Savage, G Savage Jesus. And, you know, what he said about this particular thing was, you know, um, how, how many of you, you know, you might be thinking, well, this doesn't apply to me. I'm not demon-possessed. I don't, I, don't I don't have an issue with a demon like that. But um, how many of you have issues that you just cannot get a handle on? I mean... You know, um, it's kind of like Pastor Stephen said, I could sit here and start naming them and eventually I'd hit your issue. You know, I mean, America is the most obese nation in the world. I mean, so how many people just can't get control of their eating? Um, you know, we have, a, we have a huge drug problem in America. People, people give in to their addictions constantly. Um, we, um, you know, some, some of us, we sit there in church with our hands folded and we go home and, after church and we watch porn on our computer or we watch, um, you know, R-rated movies that have very illicit um, sex scenes in them and lots of violence and, um, oh, let's see, um, well, um, you know, there's a lot of gossiping that goes on with, fa and, and not just in Facebook, but, you know, well, he said that she said that they said, and, and, and even in church, oh my goodness, we need to pray for sister so-and-so because have you heard what's going on in her life? And so we really need to pray for her. And so, you know, there, there, there you are. You, you can't be in control of your tongue. So, so we, all have, we all have a strong man in us that we just cannot seem to get control of. Um, so... We can identify with this man, with this legion of demons, because we, we all have these issues in us that we just cannot seem to get control of. And so, and so anyways, um, in verse 14 it says, Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. See, here was this, here was this man that, that could have, I mean, they, he could have healed the sick, he could have set them all free, really ministered to them, but they're, they're asking him to leave because they were afraid of what they had seen. They were afraid of what he did. You know, oh, Lord, the, we don't want him touching our issues. Um, we, we don't want him messing, messing, up, messing up our little thing that we got going on here. So, he, you know, he, you, you just, you're going to have to leave, Jesus, because this is just too much. And so, you know, in church... You know, we, we've seen this play out. We have our services, and we've, we've got that, that timer ticking, and we've got to stay on schedule. And, you know, we, we've got to have, um, you know, the, the 15 minutes to meet and greet, and we've got to, you know, a, a praise and worship. It, it needs to be in that 45-minute range, and we, we can't let the Spirit move and go, go too much past that. And, 
you know, that, that preacher, he's got about 30 minutes and then lunch. It's, it's going to be time for lunch and the crowds are going to be coming in. So we got to get out of here so we can beat the crowds. And, and so we, we have this schedule of how things are supposed to happen. And when God shows up and really wants to do a move in the church, oh, no, 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 sit, sit that down. Because first of all, it's just too offensive. It is just too offensive for God to really show up and start trying to move in there because... Um, now our issues are going to show up. Now our issues are going to come out and open. Now we're going to have to talk about some things. You know, now we're now we're going to have to be accountable for some things in our own lives. And you know, it, it's easier for me to to sit here and point out the flaws and all those other center people that aren't in church than to deal with the issues that are sitting right there in church on the on the benches beside me, but also the one that's sitting right here. You know, the, the one that, that's in my heart. What's my hidden issue? What's, what's the, the thing that's, that I can't get in control of, that I can't, that I can't um, you know, conquer? What, it, what is it in me that, that I'm needing to let God deal with? But, you know, it's just easier to kind of let that thing just, just run rampant than really to, to try to get in control of it. So, you know, we, we just can't. We just can't go there. And, and besides that, you know, when we, really, when we really do start trying to seek after God, I mean, it, so, sometimes it just feels like the, the storm just, you know, it, it, it just, it's just too hard. It's that Jesus thing, it's just too hard. Because when I start trying to really serve God and do that, it just seems like my whole life gets turned, up, up, turned upside down and all this chaos comes. And, you know, I don't know why God keeps letting this happen to me. He's supposed to, you know, if I'm serving him, then this is supposed to be easy. And he's supposed to keep these storms at, at bay. And, um, you know, Jesus left that authority to you. He, he left that authority to you to be able to, um, in, in my name, I, I, in his name, in the name of Jesus, I can. I can speak to that storm. I can cast out demons. I can lay hands on the sick and be healed. I can lay hands on my own self and say, body, you be healed in the name of Jesus. The stripes that he bore on his back were so that I could speak to my body and tell it that I, it, you're healed, body, you are healed. But, you know, like I said, it, it just, it gets, it just gets too much stir, stirred up. And, you know, so one of the things um, that, that I wanted to point out was when, when Jesus was in Capernaum and he said he decided that they, he wanted to go into this other region, he told his disciples, he said, well, let's, let's get on the boat and let's go across this, let's go across to the other region. And while they were on the boat, this storm comes up, you know, and the, the disciples are like, oh my goodness, they are scared out of their mind because they think they're fixing to drown. And, you know, and Jesus, they woke him up and they're like, don't you care if we drown? And he gets up and he rebuked in the, he rebuked the storm. And he asked him, why are you so afraid? Do you not have any faith? I told you we were, go he told them they were, where they were going. Did they think that that storm was going to keep them from going where they were supposed to go when Jesus is sitting there in the boat with them? I mean, my good, but how, how often do we do that? How often do we get in a situation where we know God has told us, go, you go, and you do, and we, we stick our big toe out there, and the, something, you know, it gets run over, and we're like, uh, no, no, mm-mm. That, no, God, that, God wouldn't let that happen to me if, if, uh, if, if I was, doing what he what I was supposed to do God wouldn't let me get out there and get in that storm really because they got in the boat with Jesus and they got out there and they got in the storm and I mean what they thought the storm was going to take them down and here's Jesus sitting in the boat with them I mean come on how, but how often does that happen to us? How often are we like right in the middle of doing what God, and I, listen, I am just as guilty. The, this has been the biggest eye-opening ministry to me. That's why I'm sharing it, because I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It, it just, 
I mean, it, it's dealing with me. I, th this is this is something that's dealing with with me. God's dealing with me on this to to learn how to trust Him and not not be not be capsized or think my boat's going down because of how big this storm all of a sudden appears. But uh, but let's go back to this story with the pigs over here because you know over in Jewish region. You know, pigs were not, nah, they did not have pigs, they did not eat pork. If they had livestock, it was going to be sheep and goats and cattle. But remember, they weren't in that Jewish region anymore. They were in the Gentile region. And, and it says that the, the pigs, it was a large herd of pigs. It wasn't just a few pigs, it was a big herd of pigs. And so this, this group, excuse me, this group of pigs um, was possibly represented income. To the, to the people of that region. And here Jesus sends the demons into these pigs and the demons run, the pigs run off in the lake and drown. Well, th that was a big portion of their income. And as soon as the devil attacked their income, they told Jesus he had to leave because, I mean, we just can't have this. We just can't have you coming in here and messing up our, how, we, how, we, how we make a living. I mean... You know, and and it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't Jesus, but the devil knew what he was doing. He he knew if he attacked that that those people would ask Jesus to leave, and they did. They they asked him to leave. And so, you know, how how often do, does that happen to us? Like maybe you've you've not maybe you have not really made some very good choices with how you handle your finances and now you're in a storm and you think well god why why are you why are you messing with my money why are you letting the devil mess with my money well possibly it goes back to the fact that you have an issue that you can't be in control of with your spending, you know, are, are you tithing? Are you giving God something to work with, with, with your money? Are you, are, you being, are you being accountable to God with your money, with your tithe? Let, let's certainly not. Let's certainly not get into that issue. That, that, would just, that would just really upset the apple cart here. You know, we, we get offended. Churches have gotten to where the, the preachers won't, they won't, talk about tithing because it, the people just get so offended because they think the pastor is, is just up there, you know, I, he, all he wants is our money. No. Well, it does cost money for the ministry to go forth, but you, you're, you're robbing yourself of a blessing by not blessing the, the, the man that's feeding you. He, he's standing up there in that pulpit and he should be giving you the word and meat to chew on. And you're, you're robbing yourself of a blessing by not blessing him with your tithe, by not, by not giving to that church or that organization that's feeding you, you in, in ministry and the word of God. You know, um, it, you're, you're just really kind of missing the boat there if, if you're not, if that offends you. And, but, I mean, there's so many people, boy, you get to talk about that money and, Heaven forbid. I mean, that that stronghold man, he just stands right up big and tall then. And so, you know, we just have got to get to a place where we can recognize Jesus um, for the resurrected power that he is. And so uh, verse 18 says, As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he had, has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. And so, you know, some, sometimes... We, fa we just fail to recognize um, what God has done for us and, get, and to, give, to give voice to that, to the, give voice to what God 
has done for us. And, you know, we, we just keep wanting to sit there in our boat in the storm and whine and not, not, not be engaged in our own lives and what's going on and, and, and take accountability and responsibility for the choices that we made, um, you know, that, that got us there and, and realize, you know, when, when, you, when you serve God, it doesn't mean that storms won't come. But when you're doing what God has appointed you to do, then those storms are not going to overtake you. And, and a lot of times that's when real, real growth happens because we learn to lean into Jesus. We learn to, to trust him even more in those situations. But, you know, we, you shouldn't always just wait for a crisis to happen in your life to really be seeking after the things of God. I mean, there, there are a lot of people that find God because of crisis, but, you know, there's a lot more to life. I mean, if you're just living from one crisis to the next, then that, that's, that's going to be a tough way to live. But serving God does not mean that those, that those crisis situations and those storms won't happen. But like I said, when, you know, when, when they got in the boat with Jesus and he said, we're going to the other side, you know, that here they had been, they had been with him. They had seen the things that he had done, you know, that um, they, they had been a part of the miracles and the great things that he had done. And they really thought in that moment, we're going to die. This is it. This is the end. Um, and, and so I'm going to touch now a little bit on another story of Jesus um, sending the disciples into, into a storm. And so um, he, you know, it's when, it's when Peter walked on water and he, he Jesus was, he had just fed the 5,000 and he was, uh, he, was try, he was trying to kind of disperse the crowd and then he wanted to go off by himself and pray. And he told the disciples, get, you get in the boat and go to the other side and I'll meet you there. And so he's up on the mountain praying and the disciples are out in the boat and all of a sudden the, here comes the storm again there and so they're out there in this in this storm that Jesus had sent them out there into yet again and he's up on the mountain he's not even in the boat this time and it says that he looks out there and he sees them straining uh, this is in this is in uh, Mark 6 and uh, he sees them straining and so he just goes casually walking out there and and it says, um, so it, let, let's see what, what verse is this. It's Mark, Mark 6, and it's verse, uh, verse, verse 48. He saw the disciples training at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost and they cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. So in, in this account of Mark, um, it was, uh, this is Peter's rendition of what happened. And so he leaves that part, leaves the part out about when he set, looks out there and he says, Jesus, if it's really you, then tell me to come to you and I will. And he gets out of the boat and promptly down to the bottom he goes, or he starts sinking. But it, um, in Matthew, the account in Matthew, it says that immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and pulled him up and then they got into the boat. And as soon as Jesus got into the boat, the storm quit. And so, you know, when, when Pastor Stephen was talking about this, he said, he, he said, which do you think actually took more faith? Do you think it took more faith for Peter to say, Jesus, if that's really you out there, then tell me to get out of the boat? Or do you think it took more faith for the ones to stay in the boat and not question if it was Jesus or not? But, but see, he had told them, get in the boat and go to the other side. 
So, so in that instance, which do you think it took more faith? The one that says, I'm in the storm and I need a sign, Lord, that, that you're still with me, that, that it's still you, that I'm still doing, or the ones that stayed in the boat and, and perhaps trusted. He said we was going to the other side, and you remember that last time when that storm came up, and we still made it, so we're going to make it. So, you know, there again, how, how many of us do that? How many of us get in the middle of that, of doing what God wants us to do, and here comes a storm, and we're like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need a sign, God. I need you to be, I need to be sure this is you. You got to tell me yet again if I'm doing what you're supposed, what I'm supposed to be doing, or is, or am I just, do I need to turn this boat around? Because this storm, I mean, it's just going on with it. See the storm, but the storm quit when, when Jesus got in the boat. But you know, at first he was just—I mean, it, he said it said he was just going to pass by. So he saw him over there in the storm, and you know, he was like, "Well, it, I mean, you know, I told him to go the other side, and they're they're working on it. They're working on getting there, and 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 so you know." But there again, some, some of us, the biggest stronghold that we face is that religious stronghold of, of, of uh, you know, that kind of that righteous indignation stands up in us. And it, it's like, you know, we just, I don't know about that Jesus. I don't know about that, that casting out demons and speaking in other tongues and and uh, laying hands on the sick. I don't, I don't know about that. That was all good back then in the Bible, but you know, nowadays we've, we, we've got doctors and we can, go to, we can go to them and we can get drugs for all our issues. We don't, we don't need that. We don't need Jesus to that point. And yet, you know, here we are again here in Texas or now in Texas seeing another school shooting on, on the news, you know. Um, when, when are we going to stand up as a church and recognize the resurrected Jesus and quit, quit hiding behind this? Uh, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Um, well, let, let, let's just go there. Let's just, let me just tell you a little bit about this grace that, that we want to hide behind. So, um, Matthew Verse 5 and 27, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully and already, has already committed adultery with her, with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. Okay, and so now let's jump over here in Romans 7, 20 verse, uh, starting in verse 21. It says, So I find this law at work, although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war, against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivered me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I find I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Chapter 8, verse 1 of Romans, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son into the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us. Do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So under the law, you had to actually commit the thing to be guilty of it. 
but now under grace, if you even think about it, then you've committed it because grace has given you the power to overcome your sinful nature. Because you now have Jesus living inside of you, you now have the power to overcome that sinful nature. So it was almost easier in a way to live under the law than it was to live under <coughs> grace because the law said don't do it, but grace says don't even think about <coughs> doing it. Molly. So, you know, <coughs> it's, it's not I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Yeah, I mean, the, the <coughs> Bible does say for by grace you have been saved through faith. But now that you can apply that grace to you, you can now overcome these issues that want to just run you, that, that want to just control your, your way of living and being and doing. Now we can be in control. Now we have the ability to speak to that storm and say, no, uh, you know what, I'm, I am doing what God has told me to do. I am right in the middle of it. I am going to the other side because that is where God told me to go. That, that is where my destiny is. There are people on, that, uh, that on the other side of there that are counting on me to make it. And so, you know what, I, I'm, th this storm, I'm either going to ride it out and I'm going to make it, or I'm going to speak to it, and I'm going to tell the storm, you have to sit down in the name of Jesus because I am going to the other side. And so that's, you know, that, that's, where we, that's where we've got to get to. We've got to recognize Jesus when he shows up. And if we're thinking of this meek little mamby-pamby Jesus or the Jesus that's still on the cross, then we are not going to recognize him when he shows up because... What we now have access to is the resurrected Jesus. That, that same power that raised Christ from the dead, remember, is now in you. Now, now It's now made a home in you. And so you can say to the storm, you know, quit. That, that was the thing that, that Jesus was, was, I guess, confounded by with his disciples was that they, they, they didn't recognize that they had the abil the same, that, that ability to say in Jesus' name, storm, stop, stop. See, G Jesus dealt with, um, he dealt with the demonic presence he, or, or, or demonic opposition all throughout his ministry. And so these storms that were coming up, they were, they were demonic activity. And so he, he could speak to them. He could speak to those demonic, that demonic activity that was happening that was trying to keep him from making those appointments that, that he was on the path to make. He could speak to those things. And so can you. Those, those storms that come up that are just, they're just demonic activity in your life, you can speak to those things, you know. But if, if we're sitting over here with our arms crossed, more worried about what this person's doing that's a sin than dealing with our own strong man issues, you know, that, that's what, that's what it can be the biggest turnoff to people about, about the Bible and about church and about the gospel is, you know, that we want to sit up, up here and look down there and think we're way up here and they're way down there and they're, those people down there, they ain't even worth our time because they're not going to heaven anyways. Listen, you, that, that is such a turnoff. That is such a turnoff for the, for the world because we're sitting up here with our own set of issues. We're, I mean, we're, we're sitting up here with our own sets of strong men that are, that are running us. We're doing a dang good job of, of keeping them hidden, or we think we are where people can't see them, but you, you're not fooling people. We're, you're not in, especially, I mean, the, like demons, they recognize other demons. They recognize Jesus. They, they recognize that authority. When you stand under the, his authority, they recognize that. They know who he is. 
They know who he is better than a lot of people do. And so when you, you can't, you can't let this just because the storm comes up, let it turn you off of doing what God wants you to be doing. But we have got to get an image of the resurrected Jesus going on in our minds and in our hearts. Because as long as we see him as Jesus on the cross, you know, we're, we're, just, we're, we're just basically seeing him as a man. We're not seeing him as our savior. And so, you know, a lot of times when you start messing with people's image of Jesus, that religious spirit, I mean, it stands up big time. It's it just because, you know, you get some idea that I'm trying to, to downplay the cross and I am absolutely not trying to downplay the cross and what he did there. I'm wanting to put more emphasis on what happened after though because that's where that's where the real that that's where it's like uh, Paul Harvey says and now the rest of the story that resurrection that is the rest of the story it it didn't end when he with with just him dying and being buried he rose again and he and and because of that now his his residence is inside of you. It's in your heart. And so that, that power, that, that resurrection power that's living in you, it can, it can help you on the inside to stand up and come against those things in you that seek to keep you bound up and keep you in bondage and keep you enslaved to certain habits and certain ways of living and doing things. And so just this morning, please hear what I'm saying because it, it's coming from a place of I want, I, I love y'all and I want you to, to be able to, to, to be strong and to be powerful in God and to be accountable for yourself and the choices that you make and quit feeling like you're just a victim of life that's happening to you and you're not in control of it. You can be in control of it. You can be in control of those issues and those storms and those, those things that just keep coming up and happening to you. And you think, I'm, I mean, I'm not doing anything. It, exactly. You're not. You're not doing anything to combat it. You're not doing anything to come against it. And so um, just let, let God minister to you. Let this word kind of sink in. It, it may be something that you have to come back to. I know it's strong, but it's, it's, it's time. It's time to really, really begin to, to address this and, and have people accept Jesus as their Savior, but Jesus as their resurrected Savior. You know, it's, I mean, like the song says, he's got fire in his eyes and he's got a sword in his hand and he's leading an army and he, and he's calling out, come on, saddle up. It's time to ride. It's time to be strong. It's time to, to stand up on the inside and, and know that we can be in control of those issues. We can be in control of those storms and maybe you can't keep them from happening, but they don't, they are not going to have, they're not going to take you down. They're not going to take you out of doing what God has you to do because you have an appointment and, and there are people in your future that are depending on you to make it. So come on, let's do this. Let, let's, let, we're going to make it. So I'm going to close this out in prayer this morning. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you haven't liked our Road to Glory page, give us a like, um, rate us, give us give us a good uh, thumbs up, like, and rate, rate our page. Share share this so the word gets out even more. And um, y'all just y'all go and have a blessed day. Well, Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that Jesus rose from the dead. Father God, that He was resurrected. That He is seated at your right hand and in that lord we know that you have given us the grace and the power 
to speak to those issues and to speak to those storms and to be overcomers and joint heirs with Christ. I thank you, Father God, that you said that your word will go forth and that it will not return void, but that it will accomplish its purpose. And so I thank you, Father God, that this morning that somebody, because of hearing this, Lord, that they, they, they got a glimpse of freedom. And, and as they begin to, to think about this, Lord, that they, will, that they will experience freedom in their lives. And so we just give you all the praise and honor and glory for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all be blessed.